Good morning. As you will notice, someone's missing over here. So in, in her famous last words, when you know Rebecca was out, she's like saying how we made it through it without either one of them getting sick. So now she's out um, with pneumonia. So extra prayers for her today. So we will start today um, with our welcome and our announcements. Um, Christmas joy offering. The Christmas joy offering will be de dedicated this morning. Um, supporting past and present church leaders as well as preparing the way for future church leaders. Thank you to everyone who participated in the Honor and Mem Memory Candles as well as the CCA Christmas Project. Your generosity helped funds to sponsor six local families and 30 family members. And I can tell when, when we were lighting them, there's definitely heat radi radiating from the corner. So, Coffee and Conversation Fellowship will be held this morning following the worship service. Um, this afternoon, we will have our Blue Christmas service. The Blue Christmas service will be held at 5. Um, it's a time for fellowship with refreshments and follow the solemn service. Christmas Eve candlelight communion service will be held on Friday, December 24th at 5 p.m. Um, Pastor Kristen will be on vacation beginning Saturday, December 25th through Saturday, January 1st. If you have any pastoral needs during this time, please contact a member of session or the church office. Sunday Family Fun Day will resume on Sunday, January 9th. The meeting time, we are updating our meeting time and making a little bit of format change for this, um, for 2022. So we'll be meeting from 11 to 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sundays and a lunch will be served. So there's room for any, more to sign up in this intergenerational activity. Be sure to invite families, friends, it, it's open to the community. Reservations will be requested after the first of the year. Um, please note, Sunday Family Fun Day, we're not gonna meet every Sunday as we did in the past, we're gonna start doing it the second and the fourth Sunday, with exceptions to be shared. Um, an adult Bible study will begin on Tuesday, January 11th at noon. Everyone is invited to bring their lunch and gather around tables in Fellowship Hall as Pastor Kristen leads the study each Tuesday. Come be part of this wonderful opportunity for fellowship and learning. Um, for missions to consider, um, con contributions to the CCA food pantry continue to be received by, through financial gifts as well as items um, for the pantry. And of course, we still have our noisy collection back there um, within, within the glass jar. It does look like we have a couple of birthdays that will be coming up this week. They're in the back. So let's go ahead and sing happy birthday. Let us worship together. We will start off today with um, a moment for Minute for Mission. For Sa Sarah Hernandez, the colorful city of Zacora in the highlands of Mexico, where millions of monarch buddy butterflies bathe the fields and forests in a sea of orange during their annual migration, was and that will always be home to her. But despite its beauty, Sarah readily admits that it simply wasn't a safe environment for her. I had an amazing childhood there, said Sarah, who was raised Presbyterian in her local church. Mexico is beauty with the best climate and the best food ever, but it also is a very dangerous country. The ongoing violence against young girls that terrorized her community while she was growing up was one of her primary reasons her parents decided to send her, like her older sister before her, to pursue her education in the US at the Presbyterian Pan American School in Kingsville, Texas. Established in 1911, the school is an international college preparatory boarding school related to the Presbyterian Church that motivates and equips young people for lives of Christian leadership in the global community. We met the school thanks to our church, which has a relationship with Pan Am, Sarah said, referring to her alma mater by its common nickname. They send scholarship award letters to people all over Mexico. The experience was life-changing and transformative. Both sisters are now distinguished graduates of Pan Am. Sarah is a pre-med student 
on a full scholarship at Schneider University in Caraville, Texas, and her sister is a Houston-based architect. Gifts to the Christmas Joy Offering help Presbyterians related help Presbyterian-related schools and colleges equipping communities of color like Pan Am prepare young people to become leaders in the church of the world. The generous people who give to Christmas Joy give us scholarships and the opportunity to continue our education in the United States, she says. I will always be grateful for that, but beyond that, they have also given us a lot of hope. All of the things I always dreamed about, thanks to them, they are making me feel like it actually happened. And so today will be the last day that we are collecting for the, the Christmas Joy offering. There are envelopes in the back. So please consider to give generously, because when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. All right, we will continue with the lighting of the Advent calendar candle. In the depths of light, God's grace light the way. In the shadow. Before. Before. Dawn, God's light, lights the way. In the confession and chaos, God's truth lights the way. In the longing and waiting, God's words light the way. God is coming, and the, and the world will never be the same. Let us, sing the, let us sing the fourth verse of the candles glowing, promise showing. Your world is the foundation of reality, your grace predates history, and still you choose to reveal yourself to us. Still you call us your children. We come longing to see your glory, praying you will once again speak life into being, oh, oh God, and call us to walk by your light. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in the opening hymn, He Came Down.
please join me in the call to, co uh, to confession. Let us confess our sins with boldness, for God's light is coming to shine in our darkness and remove the shadow of our sins. May we offer our hearts for cleansing so that we might share his love and light fully as we pray together, saying, O Lord Jesus, in this Christmas season, we are filled with gratitude, grief, and joy. Our hearts overflow knowing that you are the Holy Word which brought creation into being. Thank you for leaving the splendor of heaven to enter our corrupt and sinful world. Coming as a precious baby to shine your kingdom light in our darkness. Lord of love, we are filled with grief that you come to our but did not find welcome. Still today, your people don't know how to receive you. Wrapped in our everyday concerns, even we who love you miss your glorious advents. Merciful one, we are filled with joy knowing that you offer forgiveness to all who confess their need for you. We do need you. Our world needs your comfort, your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love. Forgive the many ways we miss your coming into our lives and open our hearts in your many guises. Let our lives bear witness to your love and light throughout the world. Sisters and brothers, receive the good news. The light of Christ shines in our darkness to bring light and life to all. By the gifts of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Please join me in the glory of Patre. Good morning, you may be seated. This has been an interesting week. <laughs> um, as, as we go through some of the readings this morning, I want to um, give thanks to several of my pastor friends around the Presbytery who helped provide some of those different readings. Um, Eric called me on Thursday morning and said, you will need pulpit supply on Sunday. And uh, then he also said, and there will be no session meeting on Monday, um, because at that point, um, Pastor Kristen just wasn't up to it. <laughs> and we're just hoping and praying that it will work out for her to be with us on Christmas Eve, and then she'll go on vacation. So it's a good thing. They are not traveling to the east, so they have canceled that trip for now. But... I assured them that we would figure it out, and after several contacts with several pastors that are busy this morning, voila, this is what you get. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to share with you, it's not going to be necessarily a sermon, but maybe just a reflection. But let, let's begin with the scripture, John, for John 1, 1 through 18. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only to witness to the light. 
the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in, the, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father. He has made him known. That ends our scripture this morning. Please pray with me. Father, as we come to you today, help us to bear witness to the light that you have given in your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we had to get rid of that. <laughs> um, light. That's what we've been talking about already this morning in so many different things. And light is something that um, opens our hearts and reveals lots of things. Um, when I look back here at the corner and I see not only the light that is today, we're remembering the light that was in many yesterdays. Um, I hope that you'll take a chance to uh, check out the list that was prepared. Um, the light that you have all provided in remembering someone or honoring someone that you've loved um, is shining in the sanctuary today. And it's just amazing what you've done. This is not only today, but in many, many days in the past. Um, the ways that as a church family, we have reached out to others. With this uh, display and then other gifts that were received, we have given some pretty uh, significant gifts to several families in this area. And what a delight that is to share that light with them. And as we look at the Advent candles, the light that is shining from them, kind of uh, reminding us of all the different gifts that God has given as we light each one of those candles. And he gave those through his son, Jesus. So as, you, as you're um, going through this day and as we approach um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I want you to think about the ways that you can continue to spread light to all those around you because we are the light of the world and because Jesus came and, and walked among us and was flesh and dwelt among us, that is why we are who we are today. So a number of years ago, we had a, a Sunday morning right around this time that our pastor was ill and I had found this, received this wonderful story um, that kind of put, puts a perspective on Christmas. And I'm going to share that with you uh, this morning. And I hope that you'll enjoy it. It was Christmas Eve, 1942. I was 15 years old and feeling like the world had caved in on me because there just hadn't been enough money to buy me that rifle that I wanted for Christmas. We did the chores early that night for some reason. I just figured that Daddy wanted a little extra time so we could read in the Bible. After supper was over, I took my boots off and stretched out in front of the fireplace and waited for Daddy to get down the old Bible. 
I was still feeling sorry for myself, and to be honest, I wasn't in much of a mood to read scriptures. But Daddy didn't get the Bible. Instead, he bundled up again and went outside. I couldn't figure it out because we had already done all the chores. I didn't worry about it long, though I was too busy wallowing in self-pity. Soon he came back in. It was a cold, clear night out, and there was ice on his beard. Come on, Matt, he said. Bundle up good. It's cold out tonight. I was really upset then. Not only wasn't I getting a rifle for Christmas, now he was dragging me out in the cold, and for no earthly reason that I could see. We'd already done all the chores, and I couldn't think of anything else that needed doing, especially not on a night like this. But I knew he was not a very patient one at one dragging one's feet when he told them to do something. So I got up and put my boots back on and got my coat. Mommy gave me a mysterious smile as I opened the door to leave the house. Something was up, but I didn't know what. Outside, I became even more dismayed. There in front of the house was the work team already hitched to the wagon, or to a big sled. <laughs> Whatever it was we were going to do wasn't going to be short, quick little job. I could tell. We never hitched up this sled unless we were going to haul a big load. Daddy was already up on the seat, reins in hand. I reluctantly climbed up beside him. The cold was already biting at me. I wasn't happy. When I was on, Daddy pulled the sled around the house and stopped in front of the woodshed. I got, he got off and I followed. I think we'll put the high sideboards on, he said. Here, help me. The high sideboards? It had been a bigger job than I wanted to do with just the low sideboards on. But whatever it was going, we were going to do would be a lot bigger with the high sideboards on. Then Daddy went into the woodshed and came out with an armload of wood. The wood I'd spent all summer hauling down from the mountain and then all fall sawing into blocks and splitting. What was he doing? Finally, I said something. I asked, what are you doing? You been by the widow Jensen's lately, he asked. Mrs. Jensen lived about two miles down the road. Her husband had died a year or so before and left her with three children, the oldest being eight. Sure, I'd been by, but so what? Yeah, I said, why? I rode by just today, and he said, little Jakey was out digging around in the woodpile trying to find a few chips. They're out of wood, Matt. That was all he said, and then he turned and went back into the woodshed for another armload of wood. I followed him. We loaded the sled so high that I began to wonder if the horses would be able to pull it. Finally, he called a halt to our loading and we went to the smokehouse, and he took down a big ham and a side of bacon. He handed them to me and told me to put them in the sled and wait. When he returned, he was carrying a sack of flour over his right shoulder and a smaller sack of something in his left hand. What's in the little sack, I asked. Shoes. They're out of shoes. Little Jakey had just gunny sacks wrapped around his feet when he was out in the woodpile this morning. I got the children a little candy, too. It just wouldn't be Christmas without a little candy. We rode the two miles to Mrs. Jensen's pretty much in silence. I tried to think through what Daddy was doing. We didn't have much by worldly standards. Of course, we did have a big wood pile, though most of what was left now was still in the form of logs that I would have to saw into blocks and split before we could use it. We also had meat and flour, so we could spare that. But, we, but I knew we didn't have any money, so why was he buying them shoes and candy? Really, why was he doing any of this? Widow Jensen had closer neighbors than us. It shouldn't have been our concern. We came in from the blind side of the Jensen house and unloaded the wood as quietly as possible. Then we took the meat and flour and shoes to the door. 
We knocked. The door opened a crack, and a timid voice said, Who is it? Lucas Miles, ma'am, and my son Matt. Could we come in for a bit? Mrs. Jensen opened the door and let us in. She had a blanket wrapped around her shoulders. The children were wrapped in another and were sitting in front of the fireplace by a very small fire that hardly gave off any heat at all. Mrs. Jensen fumbled with a match and then finally lit a lamp. We brought you a few things, ma'am, Daddy said, and set down the sack of flour. I put the meat on the table. Then he handed her the sack that had shoes in it. She opened it hesitantly and took out the shoes one pair at a time. There was a pair for her and one for each of the children. Sturdy shoes, the best shoes that would last. I watched her carefully. She bit her lower lip to keep it from trembling, and then tears filled her eyes and started running down her cheeks. She looked up at my daddy like she wanted to say something, but it wouldn't come out. We brought a load of wood too, ma'am, he said. Then he turned to me and said, Matt, go bring in enough to last a while. Let's get that fire up to size and heat this place up. I wasn't the same person when I went back out to bring in the wood. I had a big lump in my throat, and as much as I hate to admit it, there were tears in my eyes too. In my mind, I kept seeing those three kids huddled around the fireplace and their mother standing there with tears running down her cheeks with so much gratitude in her heart that she couldn't speak. My heart swelled within me and a joy that I'd never known before filled my soul. I had given at Christmas many times before, but never when it had made so much difference. I could see we were literally saving the lives of these people. I soon had the fire blazing and everyone's spirits soared. The kids started giggling when Daddy handed them each a piece of candy, and Mrs. Jensen looked on with a smile that probably hadn't crossed her face for a long time. She finally turned to us. God bless you, she said. I know the Lord has sent you. The children and I have been praying that he would send one of his angels to spare us. In spite of myself, the lump returned to my throat and the tears welled up again in my eyes. I never thought of my daddy in those exact terms before, but after Widow Jensen mentioned it, I could see it was probably true. I was sure that a better man than daddy had never walked the earth. I started remembering all the times he had gone out of his way for mommy and me and many others. The list seemed endless, I thought on it. Daddy insisted that everyone try on their shoes before we left. I was amazed when they all fit and wondered how he had known what sizes to get. Then I guessed that if he was on an errand for the Lord, that the Lord would make sure he knew he got the right sizes. Tears were running down Widow Jensen's face again when we stood up to leave. My daddy took each of the kids in his big arms and gave them a hug. They clung to him and didn't want us to go. I could see that they missed their daddy, and I was glad I still had mine. At the door, he turned to Widow Jensen and said, The missus wanted me to invite you and the children over for Christmas dinner. The turkey will be more than the three of us can eat, and a man can get cantankerous if he has to eat turkey for too many meals. We'll be by to get you about 11. It'll be nice to have some little ones around again. Matt, here, hasn't been little for quite a spell. I was the youngest. My two brothers and two sisters had all married and moved away. Mrs. Jensen nodded and said, Thank you, Brother Miles. I don't have to say, May the Lord bless you. I know for certain that he will. Out on the sled, I felt a warmth that came from deep within, I didn't even notice the cold. When we had gone a ways, Daddy turned to me and said, Matt, I want you to know something. Your mother and me have been tucking a little money away here and there all year so we could buy that rifle for you. But we didn't have quite enough. Then yesterday, a man who owed me a little money from years back came by to make things square. Your mom and me, we were so excited thinking that we could get you that rifle, 
and I started into town this morning to do just that. But the, on my way, I saw little Jakey out scratching in the woodpile with his feet wrapped in those gunny sacks, and I knew what I had to do. Son, I spent the money for shoes and a little candy for those children. I hope you understand. I understood, and my eyes became wet with tears again. I understand very well, and I was so glad Daddy had done it. Now the rifle seemed very low on my list of priorities. He had given me a lot more. He had given me the look on Mrs. Jensen's face and the radiant smiles of her three children. For the rest of my life, whenever I saw any of the Jensen's or split a block of wood, I remembered, and remembering brought back the same joy I felt riding home beside my daddy that night. He had given me much more than a rifle. He had given me the best Christmas of my life. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful to you for all the things that we have. But most of all, we are grateful for the light that came to us in the form of a baby in a manger that would help change our lives so much for the better without the possessions that we might have or acquire, but for the things that money cannot buy. As we face this Christmas season, we ask you to help us be the light for others, to show them that they are not alone and that people care. And we thank you for all that you have given to us that we do not deserve. And we look forward this year to um, a Christmas that will be meaningful, not only to us, but to those that we can share with. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will continue on now with our tithes and offerings. Um, also, we are going to be dedicating the Christmas joy offering. And um, it has been really amazing these last couple weeks as we watched and prepared for sharing with others and how God has really answered our needs and more. <laughs> We, uh, um, we had our mission meeting last week, and it, it's almost a struggle to figure out how to give away all the, all the gifts that have been given to the church for the use of others. So it's pretty remarkable when you see that. It, it is a gift. So, and as we look at the, the Christmas joy offering for the leaders in our churches, um, those that are preparing to be in church leadership, and those who have retired from church leadership. And um, hopefully um, they will, when we all uh, come together with that, they will um, have a difference in their lives too, because those are the light people for us. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gifts that you've provided to us so that we might provide to others. We ask you to bless those who, who have um, been in the pulpits of many churches and now are retired and still serving you in some capacity. We also ask that you be with those who are feeling your call and that you would bless them as they begin preparation for ministry in whatever way you are calling them to serve. We just thank you for the gifts that, that you have given, and we thank you that we are able to give them on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would please um, join me in the doxology.
Please join me in the prayer. With grateful hearts, we bring to you, O oh God, our gifts of time, talents, and treasure. We pray that they may bring light to the darkened corners of our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is the first Noel, and I think we're going to sing them all. <laughs>
You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ lives in you and has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in the grace and love and power and light of Jesus Christ. Go in peace.